This morning I have two scriptures that I've chosen to read. <clears throat> the first will be coming from the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 15, beginning with verse 16. It says, You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. The next comes from the epistle, the letter from Peter, from 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning verse 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Be to God. You may be seated. Hmm. This morning, a lot of things are flowing through my mind as we, as I prepare to uh, to share something uh, of a personal nature with you. And just recently, some things have developed to bring some things full circle for my life and for my precious wife's life. And uh, we'll share a little bit of that with you in the future. But as you think about being chosen, uh, there's, there's nothing more wonderful than to be chosen. Oh, I remember being that little scrawny kid that wanted to play basketball or, or play football and, and, and I wanted to be chosen. And, and a few times I was uh, kind of shunned and, and rejected. And that's probably a, a very difficult thing. It was a difficult thing for me uh, to accept that I was rejected. So it wasn't anything new in my life. I'd been rejected before. And it would sometimes be seem to be a pattern in my life. But there was a time when I knew that I was chosen. It wasn't on the, the varsity football team or the varsity basketball team or any other sport that I played. It was to be chosen for the priesthood of believers. It was to be chosen by someone so special that you knew the honor that it was to be chosen by him. I want to tell you a, a story. Stay with me. It's kind of a long story. I apologize for that right off the bat today. But I want you to understand just how precious it is to be chosen. And I share this story. I, I had a conversation with a, a mother. A mother that was having some very difficult times. And we talked and and the story began that she had a very rough marriage. She had one child and uh, she was, was going through a cycle of abuse. She was uh, dealing with some things that none of us would want to deal with. There was a lot of drunken parties. There was a lot of, uh, of things that were happening. Uh, a lot of physical violence with with beatings that was taking place and she had made the decision that she was going to leave her husband and in the midst of that she finally got the courage up that she got a little help and she she got her father uh, to help her and she was going to find a place to stay she was going to stay with him for a little while and he was going to help set her up in a little apartment and so uh, that was all moving pretty fast, very quickly. Uh, and, and so she was telling the story of, of in the midst of all of that, when she saw a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel, a little bit of hope that she would get uh, a better life, then she found out that she was going to have a baby. She found out she was uh, going to have a baby, and it just crushed her. And she told me about how that, that she was so upset she said that, that she thought that her life would be over because uh, in the time she said that, 
that with two children, no one else would have her. More rejection. More, uh, more darkness in her life. She felt like there was no hope. And she continued the story. And she said that, uh, that she had, had told her husband and, and he was going to try to make it right. He was, he was excited uh, about the potential of having a, another child. And so it, it kind of brought back some good things to the marriage again. And, and he was uh, kind of like in a little honeymoon. And, and he was doing good. He wasn't going out drinking every night. He wasn't gambling as much as he did. And so... Uh, the things were happening and she, you know, but she knew, she knew that this was not going to work because all it took was one weekend when he went off gambling and drinking and he came home and they get into this big fight and she ends up with black eyes. She tells of, of, of a moment when she was in such desperation that she went, in, went into the bathroom and began to pray. She wasn't a very particularly prayerful woman. She didn't particularly have much faith. She didn't have a lot to hold on to in her life. And so she tells of going into that bathroom and praying with everything that she had that she would abort this child. And at that moment, she began to, uh, to have some bleeding. And she thought, this is it. She's miscarrying this child and everything's going to be okay. She can escape, she can leave, she can get on with the life that she had hoped to have. She told her husband, I'm not, I'm not pregnant anymore. I'm not going to have a baby. And she said, you can leave. You can go. But the problem was, she was still pregnant. She was just having a lot of difficulties. She had not miscarried yet. And so... She continued to go on in about the, the seventh month, the first of the seventh month of her uh, pregnancy. She goes into labor and her water breaks and she calls for her grandfather. Uh, I'm sorry, she calls for her father to go and to get her husband and to go to the hospital. They couldn't find him. He was on a weekend drunk and they, they couldn't, couldn't find him anywhere and, and things were just really bad. Uh, but they finally located it there, that and got him to the hospital just in time as that child was being delivered. And so uh, there they were in the midst of all that. This child was severely uh, premature, didn't know if it would make it or not. So the family was there and they were, uh, they were all very concerned. The, the child weighed a pound and 14 ounces. Very tiny little child. Child, you could hold that child in your hands. And so uh, each day, this mother shared with me of how she went to the hospital and how that she still had those feelings of, of this is a burden that this child is a burden to her, and she didn't know what she would do. And so she considered uh, allowing this child to be uh, adopted. So this child could be adopted, and, and, and maybe the child would have a chance, and then maybe she would have a chance. And so she considered that, and, and day after day, for, for several weeks as she was uh, going to and from the hospital, uh, they kept telling her that we don't know if the child will live another day. Till finally, they decided that there was nothing else that they could possibly do for this child. So they decided to send this child home to die. And as they uh, decided to get everything together, 
the nurses of the hospital there decided that they would do something special for this child. They didn't want this child just to go home and die the way that it, the plan seemed to be uh, going forward. So one of the ladies knitted or crocheted, I don't know what you call that, I apologize, uh, may have ruined that moment for you. Uh, I think you call it crochet, an, an, an afghan, a very soft little afghan that they could uh, wrap that child in and send it home. Even if it was going to die, they wanted that child to, to have something special. And so they thought about what to do because every time they tried to hold that child, it would bruise the child. And uh, you couldn't really handle the child. He was so small. So what they did was they decided, one of the nurses decided that she had a little Buster Brown shoebox. And so she took that Buster Brown shoebox and she, she brought it to the hospital and they uh, took that beautiful afghan and put it, <clears throat> wrapped the, uh, the baby and put it in that little Buster Brown shoebox so that they could take that child home to die. I stand before you this morning, that child that was brought home to die in a Buster Brown shoebox. I didn't go home with my mother. I didn't live with her, but just brief periods of life. I know that gets confusing from time to time. I try to, to share with the reasons why that I was with her or, or with my father at different points. But my grandmother, who had, I have to count, I think six children of her own, and who had had miscarriages, and who had had stillborn children, who had gone through the loss of, of, of infant children to diseases like smallpox. But she was a powerful woman of prayer, as I talked about last week. So she decided she would take me home, and that she would raise me as long as God would give me to her. And so she chose me that day. That day in that bus around the shoebox, she chose me. She chose me and she chose uh, to, to, like many parents, to, to give me to God. Symbolically give me to God. God, is, as long as you will allow Him to live, I will, I will cherish Him and love Him and pray over Him. I will raise Him in a godly home so that He will know you. And so she took me home and she, she began to, uh, to take a little cloth and she would put some sugar in it and she would dip it into a little bit of water and I would suck on that for a while. That was the only nutrition that I was getting. And, and finally she just had enough despite what the doctor had said. And she, she started feeding me pet milk. Anybody know what pet milk is in here? You might make some ice cream with it every once in a while. Uh, she fed me that, that wonderful milk. And I'm telling you, I began to, to take on to that very quickly. And it wasn't long until, uh, until I was beginning to, uh, to, to grow and to, and to prosper in such a way. And she began that whole process of lathering me up and without olive oil. And I'm sure that did a lot of wonders for my skin. And, uh, and, I, and I began to, to thrive. And you see, that's what happens when people choose someone. The person that they choose begin to thrive. They thrive in a manner uh, uh, that like no other. They thrive in such a way because everything that they had been needing, everything that they had hoped for, everything that they had been created for was to have somebody to love them. Are you hearing the message people today that it's not so much uh, the, the horror of, of being cast away or rejected. Because you know, we all in some way are rejected. Each of us have, have experienced rejection somewhere in our lives. Because as long as there is sin in this world, we are going to experience rejection. Young people, 
You're going to experience some hard times. You're going to experience some rejection in your life. But what you have to focus on, what will get you through that rejection, is going to be the power of the living God, the one that loves you the most, that He chose you even before you were in your mother's womb. He loved you. And He wooed you. And He's called you into His presence now intimately and lovingly. And because you are, are chosen, then everything that should be is. And you will thrive. You will thrive in love. Well, why can't we understand that daily? Why can't we understand that today as a church? That the most important thing that we need in our lives is to be loved and accepted and chosen. And if we would understand that we're all adopted, that we're all adopted into the priesthood of believers, we're all adopted because we've been chosen by God. And if we will walk in that manner as royal priests, then we won't just become pompous. We won't just become a people that feels entitled to anything. Instead, we will understand what is necessary for those that feel rejected. Those that feel uh, like no one loves them. Those that feel like there's no hope. Those that feel like they're consumed by the darkness of this world. And so if we would begin to walk in that manner of faith, that we know what it's like to be chosen, then how could we possibly continue to reject? Oh, we can find some good excuses, can't we? We can find good excuses to reject that woman that doesn't have a very good character. You might not have liked how she looked at your husband. Oh, what about that man that, that drinks? He doesn't provide for his family. Or what about the people that sell drugs? That's destroying the fabric of our nation right now. What about those people that don't have enough self-control? That can't seem to get their lives together. And they keep putting it into their arms. Trying to escape. We can find some really good reasons why we reject all of those people, can't we? But I can only give you the one reason to choose them. And that is the love of the one that hung on a cross at Calvary. The one who loves us the most. The one that came to save us when we could not save ourselves. The one that says it is finished. Because he knew that he had done everything, my friend. He had done everything that would give you the opportunity to have everlasting life. Because he sacrificed his. It is amazing that we continue to reject and reject and reject when God is calling us to choose. To choose to go into that darkness and to carry the light of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And He empowers us. He empowers us to do great and powerful and wonderful things. If we would just repent of our sin. If we would repent of our sin, then He chooses us. If we repent of our sin, then He will uh, make us the priests and the, uh, that we are supposed to be. And He will change our hearts. You might have a hard heart today. You might not feel compassionate towards anyone. You might not have any uh, compassion towards a, a child that was born premature. You might not have any, have any compassion for that drug dealer down the street. But love is what will save each of them. Love is what will save each of them. And all you have to do is to humble yourself. And God will fill you with His love. I think about how wonderful it is to have been chosen by a grandmother that loved me so much. I remember that horrible night 
the last night that I ever spent with my grandmother. No, we didn't have a fight or anything. No, nothing bad was happening uh, to us. But her body, her body was wore out. Just like all of our bodies are going to do one day. And it was time, I'm sure, that God had ordained and, and He was going to take her home to glory. She had been faithful. She had been faithful and, and she had touched the lives of so many people. She had loved the unlovable. I say that very personally because there were a lot of times in my life that I was not very lovable. She had kept herself faithful to the one that anointed her a priestess. And she had loved her neighbors as she had loved herself. But that night it was time. I wasn't ready. Oh, I wasn't ready. I, I did not want to give her up. I know she had talked about, I'm ready, Lord. She would wake up mornings and saying, this is a beautiful day. And, 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 and I'm ready to experience this day. And then be shortly before we get ready to go to bed, she'd tell me that she loved me and she'd tell me that tomorrow our plans are to do such and such. You know, we're going to go out in that garden and we're going we're gonna to pick those peas and we're going to enjoy the fruits of the harvest. And, and she would always end it with this. She says, if we live and nothing happens, Tomorrow is going to be a great day if we live and nothing happens. But she'd say right after that, she'd say, but I'm ready. I'm ready whenever the Lord decides it's time. I'm ready to go to heaven. I'm ready to go there because I know it's going to be wonderful. And I'm sure she was thinking about how wonderful it would be that she would see her mother and maybe her precious grandmother that had done something wonderful for her in her life. And I'm sure she thought about that great banquet when she'd get there and, and that, la that other lady in the church that fried apple pies and they'd have that little competition every Sunday to see who could get the best fried apple pies. I'm sure they're in heaven right now just, just cooking it up away and just having a great time because they love each other, because they chose each other as royal priests. And priestess. I lost my grandmother that night. Everything that I had learned in nursing school, I tried. I tried desperately to save her. But the greatest thing that I ever did, I didn't have any Pompeii olive oil that night. It was about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and I knew that I couldn't go anywhere and get any. The cafeteria was closed. So I took some petroleum oil. Petroleum oil that they had that we used in nursing. And I took that oil and I began to pray over my grandmother. And one last time, see Larry, I told you I'd catch up with you, brother. And one last time, I anointed her with that oil and prayed over her, and the healing was complete. She went to be with Jesus. It's so wonderful to be chosen. But I want to end this today with telling you it is even more wonderful to choose. To choose to love the unlovable. To choose to love those that you've given up on. To love those that the world has given up on and told you that they're not worth it. But friends, as long 
is there's blood in my veins. The people that I encounter in this world are children of God and they are worth it. I don't care how horrible they act. They are redeemable. They are redeemable not because of the blood that's in my veins, but because of the blood that was shed at Calvary. They are redeemable. And we have to choose them. We have to choose them to be in relationship with them as priests and priestesses. I had no idea that I would finish this sermon the way I'm about to finish it. This all happened and is happening very, very quickly. You see, my my precious wife, her grandmother, and she loves her. And I can tell you, she's not a perfect woman, but I love her too. It's not always been easy. You see, I was the one that came and took her granddaughter away from her. She hasn't forgiven me for that yet. Ah. But this week, it's come to our attention that she needs us. And so we've had some decisions to make, and, and we're going to ask this church to, to pray for us as that circle of life completes itself. And so Pam can be with her grandmother, to love her and to, to take care of her and to do what we need to do to choose. So I ask you to pray for us, especially this week as we go to try to, oh gosh, to load up her stuff and bring her here to Dable. I mean, Jesse, I've moved enough, haven't I? <laughs> uh, I don't know how quite how I'm going to get that energy, but God will give it, and it'll be a treasure. And I do that because I love this woman more than anything in this world. But I do it even more because I love the one that loved me. And I love my Savior today. And we, are, we never know the paths that He's putting us on or where it's going to lead. But if we are faithful, if we are faithful, great and wonderful things will happen. Would you stand with me as I pray? Father, I just thank you for the testimony that you've allowed me to give this morning. As hard as it is, as difficult as it has been, I know you understand. Because you were willing to pay the greatest price as you gave your life on that cross. That Father, if there be anybody here this morning that feels rejected, if there be anybody here this morning that feels like no one loves them, then I pray that they would come and receive you and let us love them. Let us nurture them. Let us bless them. Father, I pray that if you are, are calling others to choose, maybe there are people here this morning. I don't know. I don't know the, the needs, but you know the needs, and I pray your spirit this morning. If there be somebody here that's, that's thinking of adopting a child, a precious child in their life, or maybe they're thinking of, of, of taking their grandparents or their parents into their home. Whatever the need, Lord, I pray that you would give them the strength and the Holy Spirit to, to guide them as they choose. But more than that, Lord, I pray for this entire church that each of us would have hearts that are open to choosing others. Choosing the unlovable, choosing the outcast, choosing those that the world has turned its back on. Help us to feel that joy of choosing 
so that you 